<laughs> Alright everybody, welcome back to another Friday Night Magic Tournament from Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. My name, as always, is Zachary Evans, and tonight we'll be bringing you coverage of tonight's standard F&M. Uh, should have five rounds followed by a cut to top eight. 24 players in tonight's tournament. Right into our first feature match. On the right, starting off with the tap Temple Garden is Chad Watson, who's playing the Junk Tokens deck. And his opponent, the local legend himself, Adam Vickers, on Gruel Aggro. Adam has played uh, Bug Control of his own design for the last several months, but this week is uh, audibling to Gruel Aggro. Looks like it'll be just me in here tonight as uh, Yin Seng, who's co-commentated the last couple of weeks, is in fact playing in the tournament tonight, as are the rest of our cast of uh, potential co-commentators. But I'm sure we'll get somebody in here to join me as the rounds start to finish up. So Chad responding to Adam's turn to Flinthoof Moor with a Loxodon Smiter. And Adam's draw, uh, not nearly as explosive as this deck is capable of. Looks like he's stuck on two lands as well. And there is a Fire Fist Striker, which will help him... Oh, I stand correct. It looks like it's Naya Aggro. I didn't see a single white card in Adam's deck uh, while they were playtesting earlier tonight, but apparently he is playing white for something. Which looks like Boris Reckoners. I guess he can cast that off as red, so... Not sure. You guys will find out at the same time I do. So no play from Chad usually indicates he's got a Midnight Haunting. And if Adam can find a Haste creature, he'll be able to activate the Battalion on his Firefish Striker and get past that Loxodon Smiter. Here comes a Boris Reckoner. And I'm just going to pass back. Oh, and end of turn, Chad's going to make a Knight token with his Lesnia Charm. So Lesnia Charm is a card that used to see a lot more play in the... Mostly in this defensive mode, exiling a creature, but... Somewhat falling out of favor, but Chad's still taking advantage of it to support his token theme. All the charms fairly versatile and never really dead in any matchup, so not a bad spot. Oh, good point from the chat, uh, which I probably should have figured out on my own based on the block decks that did the same thing. Uh, Adam's deck is probably still a... Uh, Gruel deck, as the Temple Garden is just a force that will enable him to cast Boros Reckoner. So some discussion over the uh, attacks, Chad piling in with the Lockstone Smiter, but also with the Knight Token, which Adam hadn't recognized. So it looks like Adam's flooding out a little bit here, still with two lands in hand. I do see a Searing Spear. So he's going to swing with the team, and uh, Firefish Tracker is going to activate. And I imagine the Knight Token can't drop, or can't block, I should say. And, and uh, Chad's going to take the full eight. Vickers is just going to spear the uh, knight token after combat. So Adam loading up his board here. But Chad's deck is definitely capable of uh, coming back from this, as most of every card in his deck is a two for one at a minimum. 
but uh, he just passes back and doesn't add anything, so it might not be the draw that he needs. And I'm going to serve in with everything. It looks like Chad does have a response. The advent of the worm coming. So now we'll eat the one of the flint hoof boars. And barring uh, anything else, looks like Chad is going to take two, five, eight from the other creatures. Uh, looks like Adam only has three lands in his hand, so Chad will get to untap, but still facing down a nearly unblockable Boros Reckoner, as well as two other creatures. Chad probably making the uh, correct decision there, blocking the smaller of the creatures, but ensuring that he'll be able to block next turn. So, fire for striker down. Chad dropping all the way down to three life, drawing nothing but lands. He passed. Chad uh, decided to attack. Uh, I can hear them out there because the shop is relatively quiet and there's no one else in here with me. Uh, he attacked out of desperation, figuring he couldn't win anyway. Uh, I'm not saying that he would have won, but uh, he could have blocked. I uh, know. Yeah, he could have blocked the uh, Forest Reckoner with the Pilgrim only taking one damage and then tried to win on the crackback, but. Uh, Exasperation got the better part of him, and we move into game two with uh, the Gruel deck of Adam Vickers up a game in this round one feature match. We'll take this opportunity, like we do every week, to thank the fine folks here at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia, for letting us hijack their FNM and broadcast it all around the world to viewers just like yourself. Lost Legion has four locations here in the greater West Virginia area in Beckley, Princeton. South Charleston and Vienna. So if you're ever in the re region, a couple hours to a lot of places like Columbus, Lexington, Richmond, Roanoke, Morgantown, and the like. Make sure to stop in and support the store that supports the stream. Obviously, if you're watching now, you know where this all happens at twitch.tv slash magic. But if you're watching after the fact on YouTube, try to check us out live sometime. 6.30 p.m. Eastern, give or take, each and every week. If you can't make your FNM Come watch ours. Well, these guys side, but also want to remind everyone that if you've ever looked for an excuse to come down to the store that you watch each and every week, here's your opportunity. $250 cash prize tournament at our Star City Games Invitational Qualifier to be held on Saturday, August 17th. Just over two, just under two months away. I guess it's just over two months away. Last time we had one of these, we had over 50 people show up. It was a great time. The tournament ran very smoothly, and so we hope the next one is going to be just as successful. Event starts at 12 noon with 11 a.m. registration starts. $25 entry fee for a standard format tournament, and the winner does get the $250 travel award in cash and an invitation to any of the Star City Games Invitationals for the rest of the calendar year. And the rest of the prize support is listed there in packs, and the top eight also gets an exclusive playmat uh, Star City Open Series points if you want to try to uh, qualify for the tournament the hard way. And also a top 8 pin. And additional prizes based on attendance. If we get a ton of people, we'll try to up the uh, prize support on that. There's the information in the store if you want to come on down. Obviously, you can contact me through any of our forms of social media if you want more information. You go to LostLegionGames.com. And for those of you who physically can't make the trip, we'll be streaming that uh, just like we stream our FNM at twitch.tv slash Magic. Hopefully you can make it. It was a, it was a good opportunity last time uh, that we had one of those for uh, people to show up. It gave them a good excuse to come. Lots of people always talk about how they want to come down to the store, but they physically can't do it uh, for an FNM because it just takes too long to get from you know point A to point B. But This is, starts at noon on a Saturday, so you can drive from a lot of different places and get here at a reasonable hour. Uh, and it really helps the store out. The last time we had one, it basically paid for all the renovations that the store did to have it, which was taking down some walls and increasing some of the gaming space. So, 
Like I always say, support your local game store if you can, and this is a great opportunity to do so. I have no idea what these guys are going to sideboard, because I don't really know what they play. I know, uh, I think Chad has some abrupt decays in the sideboard. Seems like, uh, absolute must in this matchup, but I don't really know what, uh, Adam's sideboard looked like. I don't know if people are still playing Electricery or not at this point, but that might be something to think about, though the Intangible Virtue basically cancels that out. So let's see what's going on in the chat. People are talking about the M14 pre-release, or at least the set coming out uh, midnight tonight, I guess. Some of our European viewers uh, already underway in their the pre-release events. I know I talked to several people earlier today about how they weren't going to be able to make the stream because they would be pre-releasing tonight. Uh, not, as, not as much interest about this set as in previous sets. Obviously, of course, that not as exciting as a, a new block, but I don't know, still a good good uh, opportunity to play some sealed, uh, get some casual players out and try to teach some people, try to get some new people into magic, I should say. There are still some saucy ones. The new uh, Garrick is in there very interesting. The new Chandra is very polarizing. Other cards that are getting mentioned look like Lifebane Zombie, uh, Witch Stalker, and of course the Slivers, along with uh, cards that you know are going to be impactful like Ratchet Bomb and Doomblade. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I will give everyone an update. Uh, if anyone is interested in the past, we have done streaming coverage of the Lost Legion pre-releases on the Sunday following the event, uh, or Sunday uh, of the pre-release. We do a Saturday and a Sunday. I usually play in the Saturday one and stream the Sunday one, but uh, this, this time I think I'm going to sit this one out. So there will not be uh, coverage of the Sunday pre-release this week. Uh, simply because it's just, I don't know, it's not enough hours in the week to do everything. So I'm going to sit this one out, but uh, we will have next week, for those of you who are interested and always ask for more draft coverage, we will have M14 uh, Corset Draft next week as the format for our f &M. So make sure you tune in then. If limited is your bag, and we'll try to have uh, another super pod like we did uh, for Dragon's Maze with eight of our best players, so we have a good quality draft session for you. Looks like both of these guys are shipping back their six. And while they're doing that, we'll remind everyone to make sure and support the sponsors of the stream. Conveniently, Adam has put his live total over the advertisement for inkplaymats.com, who hooked us up with this pretty sweet uh, double playmat for our feature area. If you want something similar, or you're just in the market for playmats in general, head over to inkplaymats.com. Daily sales on original art uh, playmats starting at $10. Custom playmats starting as cheap as $25, with uh, custom double playmats at $55. Excellent guys to work with. Uh, I think they do great work. I wholeheartedly support them. And then also, if you're looking for Magic Singles, obviously we say support your local game store as best you can, but we all know you can't get everything you need from the local store. So if there's cards you're missing, head over to AffinityForCards.com. Use coupon code LOSTLEGION, all one word, for 5% off your first order. And meanwhile, Adam tries to cheat, because he did in fact win the first game. So a tapped overgrown tomb from Chad is met by a turn one strong Kirk Noel from Adam, which is uh, definitely a spot he wants to be in. Looks like we're going to see an Avicen's Pilgrim, which uh, is not sure if Chad would want to block anyway, but he can't because it is a human. The oft-forgotten interaction of the second line of, uh, or the first line of strong Kirk Noble's text. Come in. Hey, bud. Uh, I don't know if you're or not. Just me in here tonight. Ooh. So I'm now joined by Max Turner. Ooh. Got your Otis Punkmeyer blueberry muffin. No, pro player uh, dinner. Nice. Well, we've got uh, we've got roommate battle here. We've got uh, Chad and Adam playing. 
At what point did Adam switch to Gruel Aggro? When he acquired the Guts of Not Gruel Aggro. Mm. When he got my Hell Rogers and Boris. That is interesting because when he was playtesting it earlier tonight, I literally thought to myself, oh, he must be borrowing Max's deck. <laughs> but uh, Adam got the first one. Uh, Chad didn't draw anything. He drew like eight lands, I think. Um, well, which here's... tapping is visually offensive? Because the Chad is noticed. My tapping, most likely. Oh no, they. Uh, this would not be the first week that people would find something to complain about Chad's mechanics. But as I've told people in the past, that's the, exactly what Chad is going for. So he's going to take seven off this attack here. From a hasty flint hoof boar and an unleashed cackler. What are you slam down there? Is it a midnight hunting or lingering souls? It was the front half of lingering souls. Which we're using it. It looks like uh, Pokemon cards. Yes. Adam in a pretty good position right here. Yep. Five mana coming for a Thrag Tusk. There you go, that helps out a lot. Oh uh, yeah, it doesn't hurt. So he can now stop the, uh, barring some kind of shenanigans, double Searing Spears or, or the like from uh, Adam, he can at least stop that uh, Strong Kirk from getting any bigger. Got Here comes a Hell Rider. Never mind. Difference. Never mind. All right. So four damage directly to Chad, regardless of blocks. And then I guess you have he has to, to block the Hell Rider, doesn't he? Yeah, there's no other way to win this game if you he don't. Eats what? Eight more? Seven. Seven. That's good. Mm -hmm. I think Adam's realizing he forgot to put a counter on the Strong Kirk Noble last turn. I don't know how that rule looks. Hellrider is such a good magic card. Yes. In poker, we would have called what Chad just did a string bet. As he blocked with one creature, and then decided to block with the other creatures after the fact, but... We'll allow it. But he's going to drop down to 8 off the 5 damage from the Cackler and the Flint Hoof Boar. But he does have a beast, which helps in this, uh, creature battle. Mm -hmm. I guess this beast, this gr this much more, uh, this much greener Pokemon card is the beast Pokemon. Intangible Virtue, so he's going to let him get in some incremental damage here, while also leaving blockers back. Could probably ask for a whole lot more right here. Virtue is the best card in this deck. Well, Lingering Souls is the best card in this deck, but it's only as good as, you know... I don't know. The games that you draw Virtue are infinitely easier to win than the games you don't. So he's going to flash back his Lingering Souls. I wonder why he used his one guy that he can block with, potentially. Uh, that is a good question. That is a black manosaurus he tapped, right? Under the Absence Pilgrim? So. Is it a brought decay? He might. Or he might just not have anything to... Uh, uh, still got a hand? Yes. Here comes... Here comes Reckoner. Maybe. Well, we can't attack here, because that beast is a 4-4. And borrowing a Lightning Mauler and a Firefish Striker, none of that... None of those attacks seem good. And even then it doesn't seem very good as you're going to suicide whatever creature you just played to <laughs> the Firefish Striker into one of those uh, Lingering Souls tokens. And yes, you're correct. Trevor the Pirate in the chat, if he would have remembered his trigger, his strong card could not have been double blocked and murdered like that. Yep. Such are the perils of the Triggers. round one new deck uh, gambit that someone plays. I survived Duress, Mind Rot, Mind Rot. Hmm. Were you playing uh, a more casual player? It was the first tournament. Hmm. But, I mean, he ran my hand out, and I just drew out of it. Actually, uh, uh, Duress, Mind Rot against your John Midrange deck is pretty good, actually. <laughs> I remember back when Valakut was still a deck, I think it was... I forget who it was. Uh, it was somebody on TCG Player, one of their uh, writers was talking about how playing mind advocating playing mind rot out of the sideboard against the Titan decks because they have to expend their entire hands. Right. So the turn that they, you know, cultivate into six man you know, you would just mind rot for the last two cards in their hand. That's a very sound idea. 
So does he use the Reckoner to chunk the 4-4 to down Chad? He didn't. Okay. He can basically attack into it either way, you know what I mean? Honestly, he was just trying to end it. Mm-hmm. Because if he just uses a Spirit Token to block the Reckoner, he's like, I'm going to do Mm-hmm. He might have a uh, Rampager here as well. That'd be saucy. And I guess he's always opening himself up to Chad making a mistake in terms of blocks. So the tokens are... One four four beast and two two two... Two 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 spirits. So he could chump the... Is he playing a spell? Is Chad? He's already sitting on a card. He has two cards in his hand, but I think he's just trying to figure out how he wants to block here. Maybe he has. He plays like Advents and Midnight Honics. I would put the Absence Pilgrim on the Reckoner. And then I would block to kill everything else. I do not like these blocks at all. Hey, hello. So Joseph Deal. I know. And there is the Rampager, like we expected. So, the the um, Reckoner Trigger is going to do four to Chad. So if and it's, it's seven. Yep. Good. Are we going to... Golgari Charm? Golgari Charm in response, giving everything minus one, minus one. We're regenerating all those dudes. That's pretty good, too. I think he did... I think he did say regenerate. That's still good, though. He still gets a little mm -hmm. So that's seven damage. So three is going to trample over, and he's going to take th four from the trigger, so he's going to go down to exactly one, I believe. And Adam is going to lose his flint hoof boar and his... Um, he's going to lose his It's just a one one, isn't it? Yeah, he, yeah he's just going to lose the boar, and he's going to lose the boar's reckoner if he doesn't first strike it. If he first strikes it, then he doesn't get in nearly as much damage. I think what you do is... is he you doesn't first strike it. He still doesn't trade with it. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, I, for, I forgot that it... it he doesn't want to first strike it. He wants it to deal damage. I, back. F I forgot that it uh, it pumps the backside, too, because I'm an idiot. Blood Rush is uh, really, really... Uh, they just called for a judge. This is our first... I would, it's not our first. Last week was the first time. In almost a year... I'm trying to listen to see what happens here. I don't know what he's asking about. I, I think I think the question may have been, uh, I think uh, well, not what the exact question is, but what I think that the issue was is regenerating creature removes it from combat. But not till it's dealt. Yeah, but when you put, you know, the, what we used to call the old regeneration shield, you know, once you have your shields up, it doesn't trigger, and, or it doesn't enact uh, itself until you actually have dealt lethal damage. Correct. And so Adam choosing to, just like we talked about, he's going to send the triggered damage straight to Chad. So Chad is down to one here, and he adds another Stromkirk Noble to the board. Which the four for her. Yeah, the question here is, can Chad find a way to get enough damage through here? So he's got one, two, three, four. He can, he can push through five if he attacks with the... Why the Pilgrim die? Because we're generated. Oh, yeah, the charms everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... He's going to need to find uh, an Abrupt Decay to answer that Boros Reckoner is just dead. So it looks like he's attacking with all of his creature tokens, which if he doesn't block would be 8, right? Yeah, I think it's 9 if you count the Pilgrim. Right. 
and add a, a, a enemy is choosing to chump block the yeah, the beast token. So just going to take five, goes down to seven. There are 24 players. Is that four rounds or five rounds? I think it's five rounds. I wish it was four rounds. Maybe you can talk JV into four rounds. <laughs> and that's it. So a chance dead. Ted's dead. Absent. Yeah, that works too. I guess it done. Well, if the last card in Chad's hand was an abrupt decay, which I imagine it wasn't, otherwise he would have flipped it over and said, I had this, I wouldn't have lived. But uh, I'm curious, I'm, I do want to watch and see what the last card in his hand is because, uh, oh, what was it? I didn't see. Nobody knows. It's one of the greatest mysteries of our time. We have time to slot somebody over, don't we? Yeah, we got some.